So Appy Entertainment, we've been building games for for four years now on uh, iOS. We've also done a couple games on Android. Um, we've changed from doing premium games. We originally started from the console business, and we started doing premium games. So our original games were Face Fighter and um, uh, Zombie Pizza, uh, Toon Runner. Those were all of our original premium games. And since then, we've moved to doing uh, games that are based on uh, free-to-play. You know, we like to look at ourselves as being deadly serious about stupid fun. That's our motto around here. So all Appy games um, are meant to be have a, have a high entertainment value. And, and, and primarily what we mean by that is that they should make you laugh. What we wanted to do is take, um, on a high level, take a role-playing game um, that was more like a World of Warcraft style game, but then apply um, this animal uh, overlay to everything in the game. So the, the villain is an evil vampire frog named Skulk, and the heroes are hippos and um, bulldogs and uh, um, rhinos, owls. owls. Yeah. So we're able to take these, these fantasy tropes that everybody's familiar with and apply them to animals. We think it's a really, really funny and fun um, approach. What we tried to do was basically take a, um, the classical kind of RPG that you know, all of us grew up with and kind of distill it down to the purity of going out fighting for gear um, and kind of earning that gear and then moving on to tougher challenges, but also doing it with your friends. Um, so if my friends are offline, I can still invite their heroes in. I can adventure with them. Uh, I see the gear they're wearing. I see the names that they've been given. Uh, you know, I see their levels, all that stuff. Uh, and then when the challenge is over, that hero returns back to that player with a reward for going on that uh, adventure with me. The way we kind of look at it is that the audience is so vast right now, and you know, really just putting them into, into categories like casual and midcore and hardcore is kind of doing a disservice to the audience. We think that there's plenty of casual players that want a little more in-depth experience than they normally get with a casual game. We think there's plenty of hardcore uh, players that actually want to kind of step back and just do something for five minutes a day or come back to the game four or five times during the course of a day. So what we're really aiming at is all players that want to have a little bit deeper experience and want to keep coming back to the, to the game on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I, I think the market, uh, particularly on iOS, has uh, demanded more um, depth from gameplay. Uh, if you look at the top grossing charts, all of the games, um, though accessible and casual, as you get further and further into the game, become deeper and deeper. Um, and that's really an, an essential thing moving forward. I would say the approach that we take with um, all of our games is that um, if we, we design the game so that they could become a brand, and we essentially design them as a brand. Uh, if that game gets traction and people love the IP, um, if they you know, love the animal characters and animal legends, or if they love the monsters that, that they fight in Spellcraft, that could easily segue into a, a larger brand, whether that's you know, going into TV or w what have you, right? Um, so that's the way that we approach uh, pretty much all the games we design. Yeah, and we, we create you know we create separate decks so that that uh, the, as jumping off points, if people wanted to make a TV show based on Spellcraft or based on Trucks and Skulls, we had that material here. We always build around that. I mean, my background was in the comic book industry where we did um, we actually created the comic book that turned into Men in Black. And so we had this idea that okay, it can start off as one thing, start off as a black and white comic, it turned into a gigantic billion dollar franchise movie, and I've seen that actually happen. So the same is happening in mobile all the time. It's happening with Where's My Water, it happened with um, Angry Birds. So the new franchises of tomorrow are probably going to be started in mobile because of the vast reach that it has. And we, we think it's extremely important because of that. We looked at the, the trends of the marketplace about two years ago, and we had done just done Trucks and Skulls, which had been a very big success for us as our most successful game to date. And Apple had given it a top banner. It was right next to Oprah during Christmas time. Um, so it, was, it, it really got a lot of traction. And as a result, after we saw kind of how it rose through the charts and then fell again after a period of time, we realized that the only way that we're going to actually make a long-term success of building games on mobile is to develop an audience that's playing them on a regular basis and can give us more than 99 cents. It became a necessity for us from a business model standpoint to look at it and say, really, if we're going to try to reach these vast numbers of new players, especially that are playing these games, 
we have to have a free price tag and we have to have compelling ways for them to earn gems that aren't they can either buy them or they can earn them by watching videos or other ways and that's going to be the business model of the future and, and clearly that's what's happened if you look at what's what's going on now i believe it's something like 80 percent of um, the top grossing now are all free to play and that's up like five percent from what it was two months ago which is up five percent from what it was two months before that so we view free to play as going to be the dominant way that games in general including console games eventually are going to be distributed anything digital is going to be free to play on the gaming side or mostly free to play. The first thing I would say about the marketplace is that, you know, nobody knows anything. I mean, it's changing all the time. It's very difficult to get, uh, to get discovered. And our approach is just to make the best possible games we can and to continue to make sure that we're addressing the customers that we already have and get them to try the new, the new ones and to have word of mouth start spreading about the games. So there really isn't like a secret sauce, like if we just were to buy this or do this or do the other thing. It really is about trying to continuously make games that have high gameplay value. Really, we look at these games as one giant conversation that we want players to have with each other. And if they're having a conversation with each other, eventually that starts to leak out past that group into other groups. Right, but, but just trying to buy your way in all the time, it's, it's, it's good temporarily. It's good as a burst. And, and we do that, of course, strategically as well. But really, it's about focusing on the product and trying to make the best possible game.